Former National Prosecuting Authority prosecutor Glennis Breitenbach took the stand at the Mohoro Commission of Inquiry yesterday. The inquiry, which is now in its second week, is investigating suspended NPA officials Lawrence Mpwebi and Nomtobo Jiba's fitness to hold office. Breitenbach cited her doubts caused by the way Jiba had dealt with the prosecution of former police commissioner Jackie Silebi, as well as her involvement in false charges against advocate Gerinel. She also told the inquiry that Mkhwebi's decision to withdraw charges against controversial former crime intelligence boss Richard Ndluli was not sound in law and that he had absolutely no authority to do so. To discuss this further, we're joined in studio by constitutional law expert, advocate Mfisani Siboto. So good to have you in studio. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Lee. Ah, so two weeks in, um, I suppose, let, let, let me get, a, let me get a, a, a summarized version from you of, of some of the things that have been revealed at this inquiry. Well, some of it is not new, really. It's stuff that has been reported in the media before, and it's the basis upon which the president has suspended um, Nomtobo Chiba and Lawrence Mkhwebi. And quite interestingly, we've had quite senior prosecutors um, painting not so glorifying or rather not so positive picture about uh, Lawrence Mkhwebi and Nomtobo Chiba. I mean, we had Glenn Breitenbach who expecting your hand boys to come with more explosive evidence going forward. So as it stands, it's still not looking, or rather it's not looking food for Nomtobo and Lawrence Mkhwebi. It certainly does, and, and add to that what's been happening at the, uh, the State Capture Commission, because that's another uh, a load of evidence that's been handed down against the two of them. No, absolutely. And it's quite damning in a sense that what Agriza has come up with, which the prosecutors or the investigators in the State Capture Commission have verified to be true. So you look at that in conjunction with, I mean, you look at what is happening with Agriza at the State Capture Commission and the evidence, first-hand evidence of the senior prosecutors who are alleged to be ill-treated by the two senior prosecutors i.e. Nomtobo Chiba and Lawrence Mkhwebi, it certainly won't look good for the two of them. Yeah. All right, let's, let's, let's sort of look into Glynis Breitenbach yesterday and what she had to say. Were there any surprises there? What did you make of her testimony? Well, there weren't any surprises because she's been making the allegations over and over before she resigned in 2014. Of course, now it is different because she's not talking to media. She's actually talking to a commission of yeah. inquiry. So that is very important. But nothing really new in terms of how she was dealt with in relation to Richard Mkluli's charges and so on. So none of the evidence that came out was really new. What is important now is that it's under oath and it's in front of a commission of inquiry, which will empower the president to take a decision going forward. Yeah, which is which is important at the end of the day. I mean, and that's why this this commission is is quite short. It needs to be uh, done and finished, wrapped up, and a decision made. Uh, yeah. Within uh, how long has it got again? No, absolutely, because remember again, we're dealing with a question here where the NPA wants to reinvent itself, as yeah. it where we've got uh, Advocate Patoy now leading the National Prosecuting Authority. What you do not want is a second hand in charge, third hand in charge being marred in, this, um, uh, in these uh, allegations. So, of course, the president wants to take action, wants to take decisive action as soon as he possibly can. Again, to reinvent the NPA, you want Batohi to have people she can trust, people that are not admired in conspire, rather in allegations of fraud, in allegations of not being fit prop and proper to hold office, which is why it's such an important inquiry and it must be concluded sooner rather than later. You know, some of the, the criticism, and it, it it's you can help me see whether it's warranted or not because as you mentioned in your previous answer a lot of the things that we heard yesterday coming from Glynis Breitenbach was already out in the media she'd already spoken about all of that but many questioning the fact listen you know what she is a part of the DA she is a yeah. DA member you know does this make her conflicted um, did it did it take away some of the credibility yep well I'd suggest no because remember, the allegations she made yesterday are not new. Yeah. It's allegations she made pre-2014 before she resigned, presumably before she even decided she was going to join the Democratic Alliance. It would have been something different if she had resigned and we never knew why she had resigned. And all of a sudden, as a DA member, she's got something to say. So that's on the one hand. Secondly, I do not link the NPA to the NCs because presumably the question comes from, well, the ANC people, well, DA or rather... Gladness wants to deal with the ANC people. Well, I wouldn't 
think of um, um, Chiba as being aligned to the NC, certainly not in a position at the MPA. Mm -hmm. So in short, I wouldn't, I wouldn't link the two and I wouldn't think it would be seen as a conflict of interest. Okay. There was quite a, um, a lot of things that she did come up and say. Her one statement saying... Um, wanted Richard Mdluli to be prosecuted. Her statement that her wanting Richard Mdluli to be prosecuted ended her career. Um, yeah. You know, w would you say that that sort of was the, the, the final nail in her coffin? I, I, it was a bit of a stretch, particularly because, I mean, she could argue it was constructive dismissal, but the fact of the matter is she resigned. So I wouldn't take it as far as, well, that was the end of her career. But certainly, it alludes to the fact that there were issues and there was, there was, there was uh, a conflict between Mtobo Chiba and Clinton Spratenbach, particularly in relation to Richard Mkluli. And that was the basis for the fallout, well, as so she alleges, and I think they can't, that can't be disputed. But ultimately, yes, her insistence that um, Richard Mkluli be charged when it was quite apparent that Lawrence Mkwebi wanted him protected, was perhaps, yes, as a metaphor would go, the final nail in her coffin. Yeah. I mean, she, she also goes, goes in to speak about Jiba and how, yeah. you know, she was amazed by how she soared through the ranks and got to the position where Breitenbach said she absolutely did not deserve that. I mean, it was just, yeah. she was amazed by uh, uh, her, her elevation. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's the president's prerogative. Yeah. Um, ultimately, it's not up to Glennis Breitenbach to decide who is worth and who isn't. We've got the NPA Act and the Constitution which sets out who can be elevated to that position at the discretion of the president, provided, of course, it's rational and lawful. So to an extent, you can't provide any evidence which suggests that, well, she does not meet these minimum requirements in terms of the Act and the Constitution. Then really what you can suggest is that, well, it's a personal opinion which has no bearing in law. Yeah. In terms of the, the, the two instances that were brought up where she mentioned um, uh, how Jiba dealt with uh, Police Commissioner Jackie Selebi, yeah. the, the, the former police commissioner, as well as her involvement in a trumped-up charge against Advocate Heri Nell. Remind us of those. What, what, what happened there? Well, what had happened was, which is what seems to happen at the NPA all the time, you seem to find NPA heads which are mired in political situations where their judgment, their independent judgment, which is what is required of them, is conflicted with politics. I mean, these are, of course, allegations to an extent they are not tested in the court of law. But what you find is exactly that. Ferenel was prosecuting or intended to prosecute political heads. And in dealing with him, because he was a senior prosecutor at the time, they were of the view that if we bring charges against them, then we somewhat put him off a leash. So a scare tactic, as it were, again, this is an allegation. So to an extent there's veracity in that allegation, then of course you've got problems. Similarly with Cheki Silebi, who was of course um, uh, implicated and eventually convicted of fraud, racketeering, money laundering, in terms of his relationship with Glani Agliotti at the time. Mm. You, of course, have got a problem there because we have a senior police official who is involved in corruption, money laundering, and is in cohorts with criminals. You want those people to be dealt with. So at the point Clarinel wanted to deal with, um, with Jackie Silebi, again, politics came into play from senior politicians. So that is at the heart of this commission. You want to find out whether these allegations intend indeed have veracity, because if they do, they're certainly not independent and can't be fit to hold office. Well, I mean, you know, her, her testimony was very similar when we're talking about Mpwebi now, and yeah. where she also um, made reference to uh, former crime intelligence boss Richard Mgluli. Yeah. Now, last week we also heard the same thing, what Prosecutor Jan Ferreira told the, uh, the, 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 the commission that Mpwebi had no authority to interfere in that case as well. Yeah. So, obviously, it appears that it was coming from somewhere else, this, this authority and these interactions. No, absolutely. I mean, again, you can't look at this inquiry in isolation yeah. with what we had from Agrees as well. There seems to be a web here, certainly a concerted web, to uh, manipulate the system. Again, I repeat this is an allegation from a political head. And it can't be coincidence where you have Mkwebi, you've got Namto Wojiba. And you can't, it can't be coincidence that every time there's an allegation of an impropriety on the one, 
for some reason it relates to the second as well. So again, I would suggest that you probably have hit the nail on the head, that there is an overseeing person, a poly possibly a political head, who is in control of um, everything that has been happening at the NPA. Mm -hmm. Again, influencing politically what should be an independent institution like the National Prosecuting Authority. Let's look at it going forward now, because obviously a lot of these allegations and revelations that are coming out is just once again even perhaps uh, affirming the reputation that the NPA has and, and or making it even worse. I don't know if it can get worse, unfortunately, yeah. with everything that is being revealed over these last couple of, of weeks and, and months and years, in fact. Shamir Batohi has got a massive task ahead of her. Do you think, in your opinion, that she's the right person to turn this around? Do you think after everything that is coming out now, the NPA can finally be something that <clears throat> is looked to with respect and can be turned around? I mean, I know it's got a lot of hard work ahead of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, one has no option but to give her the chance. And I've got no basis to assume that she's not fit for the job. She's got a very colorful history behind her, good experience. And what is important is that her peers seem by and large to speak positively um, about her. But what is going to be important is the systems and the structure of the NPA, because she certainly can't carry the NPA on her shoulders alone. The systems have to be put in place. The rot needs to be cleansed. It needs to be pulled out of the NPA. So to an extent, you've got compromised individuals, individuals that are influenced by politics. You need to root those out particularly at strategic important positions like the National Director of Public Prosecution, Deputy Head, for example, Special Director of Public Prosecution. These are people that wield a lot of power and a lot of influence. To an extent, they are still beholden on politics and external factors, either than their mandate as the prosecutors. Then Patohi can try all she wants. She's not going to change the institution, certainly if not from a perception point of view. Because if you see compromised individuals within the NPA and they remain there, regardless of how mighty Patoi might be, ultimately there won't be any change, certainly from a perception, public perception point of view. So wait and see. The president has, said all, has made all the right noises in certainly respect has. of the NPA because one of the big concerns was the power, the exclusive power that seems to lie with the president in terms of appointing the NPA head. This president has decided it's going to be a consultative process and somewhat transparent. So that is positive. So if you've got a head of state who's got that mindset in relation to the NPA and you've got someone who's celebrated by the peers in form of the incoming NPA head, then perhaps from a public perception point of view at the very least, we've got confidence in the NPA. Yeah, well, it's uh, all to be seen and let's, let's, let's hope for the best coming out of it. And also uh, we wait until she officially does take office to to try and turn the NPA around. Um, oh, we've run out of time. I was going to ask you to give us a bit of a preview, but I suppose sure. we'll have to wait and see on that this <laughs> afternoon. Cause, yeah. uh, or this morning, actually. It's going yeah. to pick up and we'll hear uh, yeah. more, more testimonies coming through. Absolutely. Thank you for talking to us. Thanks for having me. Real great me, pleasure yeah. having you in studio with us. Constitutional law expert, advocate Mfisani Seboto, uh, discussing former National Prosecuting Authority, uh, Glennis Breitenbach's testimony at the Mahoro Commission of Inquiry, and that was yesterday. Let's take a break.